Gloria Austin and the Equine Heritage Institute are proud to present The Golden Carriage Brought Back to Life, held at the Grand Oaks Resort and Carriage Museum in Weirsdale, Florida. So we're harnessing up the leaders now. Um, we've put the other five sets of harness on. This harness was originally made uh, for Gloria's Cladruba horses, and these are Spanish horses, so they're quite a bit smaller. Um, so we have to make quite a few adjustments, but the harness was made by Henk van der Weel in, uh, in Belgium. And this, this harness is, uh, has to be fitted really well because it's so heavy. We put some gold braid, uh, gold braid in their manes, like mane dressings for the horse, uh, so the horse's manes look nice. This is all to exaggerate the horses and show your wealth as much as possible. You see all, see all the crowns on top of all the turrets. There's crowns on all the buckles of the harness. The harness uh, buckles were made by Paul Sam of Paris, France. And um, the harness was made, as I say, by Henk van der Weel. The founder of the Equine Heritage Institute, Ms. Gloria Austin. She is. You will never see this any place else in the United States. And it's an original Austrian Arm Brewster dress chariot, it's called. This is full dress regalia. Those of you who are privileged to be backstage when we were putting two, you will never see the putting two process no matter where you go in the world because the royals keep that a secret. That is done in the background and when the queen appears in the carriage, everything is tidied up or there's nobody but what they are in full garb, such as you see here. Let's get this show on the road. There's there's the road. road. Gloria Austin's private coachman, David Saunders, was a royal coachman for Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip for more than 20 years. So on this day, David was in his element as he climbed atop the golden carriage to take the reins. Let's couple of these reins up. Yeah, they're putting the leaders on now. Rosie on top. Yeah. Rosie on the right. They're feeding the leader reins through now through the side turret, yeah, lift those reins up above the turret, there you go, let's, let's tuck them away, okay there's a, oh you've done, you know the belly band's undone, yeah. Tristan's now adjusting these uh, traces which are very awkward, these are six in hand reins so they're very very long, they have to go such a long way back so there's a lot of rain. Orchestrating a royal procession such as this takes a highly skilled team of experienced horsemen and constant training with the horses themselves. The horses are trained for months on end to walk or do a parade trot, and in this case we're walking uh, and it was because we wanted to take a long time for us, the royals wanted us to take the time to be seen, to see them and to see the regalia, you've got to admire the horses, the polished harness, the gold. You've got to go slow enough for the commoner to witness what is happening in front of them. So as I told you, Emily and Mindy are on the outriding horses and David is driving purebred Spanish horses called PREs. They are actually from Spain. Uh, David and Jean and I went to Spain with Regina Campos and we traveled for two weeks throughout Spain looking at 65 horses and we selected four of the horses that you see here on that first trip. In the second trip, we went over the two swing team horses, the two that are in the middle, were our second purchases over there, but we went right back to Miguel de Cardenas of Ithaca, Spain. So these are very regal horses that have been used. This breed has been used for generation by the royals, but the Spanish breed are all prized for their gray color, and as the horse ages, they become white in, in color, and that's what the royals wanted. It's a sign of purity, it's a sign of aristocracy, uh, it's a sign of uh, what are you, the best of the best, okay? And normally, the aristocrats wouldn't care if there, were sh if there were people on the road, if they used the whip to get the people, the cattle, the sheep out of the way of a royal procession. Those outriders are living shields. So if somebody were to attack Consuelo de Grun, the countess that's riding in the back of the carriage, those outriders would take the gunfire as of today, just like Secret Service people are trained to do that for Donald Trump today. They are, have to be willing to take the bullet. 
And in the old days, they had to be willing to take the arrow or the blade or any uh, threatening attack that came to the royals that were sitting inside the carriage. As you can see, when Gloria Austin brought her golden carriage back to life in February of 2017, she gave every attention to detail, including the royal passenger inside the coach, a direct descendant to the Emperor of Austria, Countess Consuela. With the help of her golden carriage, Gloria Austin escorted the Countess back in time to the 1850s, when her great-great-grandparents ruled the Austrian Empire setting the tone for a magical day indeed. The coachman David Saunders is from Great Britain. He actually worked for 20 years for Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth, but he worked for the Queen in royal processional turnouts. That's why he's not, he's very amenable to putting on silk stockings and all of this regalia. The, the, there's not a lot of men that would put on these wigs today and a tricorn hat, silk stockings and buckle shoes. But David is very willing to do that because he knows what a procession is like because he worked for the queen in some of these royal processions. But he is a private coachman. He actually was the private coachman of Prince Philip when they were competing in combined driving events and the like. There are several other uh, professional coachmen out there, Jean-Paul Gaultier, James Houston, and Tristan Aldrich are all walking with them. They are in bowler hats and suits, and the girls that are riding the horses are in what we call full livery, but the people on the carriage are actually in full state livery full state livery, and it's an original Austrian arm brewster dress chariot, it's called. This is full dress regalia. You would never see this any place in the world, be backstage to see them put to. Let's put the second pole strap on. This is just for safety. Okay, he's gonna make a right turn. So this carriage is the only full state European carriage in the United States. So that's what makes it very special. The other thing is that it's gilded. It's, this is real gold that you're seeing. There's gold plate on the uh, lamps. There's gold leaf on the wheels. Uh, there's gold and bullion in the threads that are on the what we call the hammer cloth. Grand Oaks Museum, which houses my collection of carriages, is actually open, in fact, every day of the week, 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So come by and you can see probably 162 carriages that I own and you can see some artifacts that were used when you traveled years and years ago. And these carriages are not dilapidated. They've been restored to as close to their original condition as I can get them. And most of them are very drivable. And if you come during the weekdays at nine o'clock, I'm usually out driving my own horses to a very modern carriage because most of the antique carriages are actually in the museum. But again, all of those antique carriages you're gonna see are shiny and they're drivable. The Grand Oaks Carriage Museum is home to one of the world's largest private collections of carriages and equine artifacts. Step back in time and enjoy the elegance and pageantry of over 160 European and American carriages, including the elaborate 1850 Ambrewster Dress Chariot, the Golden Carriage. So come on out and see the Golden Carriage for yourself any day of the week, stored and displayed in Gloria Austin's Carriage Museum at the beautiful Grand Oaks Resort, located between Lady Lake and Weirsdale, adjacent to the villages. This is a unique, one-of-a-kind experience, brought to you by Gloria Austin and the Equine Heritage Institute. The Equine Heritage Institute is a 501c3 tax-exempt, not-for-profit organization. If you'd like to join our mission, which is to educate, celebrate, and preserve the history of the horse and its role in shaping world civilizations and changing lives, you can visit us on the web at equineheritageinstitute.org and make a donation today. <music>